thanks for being here and uh, supporting USA Wrestling. But more importantly, what you guys and, and gals are doing at home and the impact you're having on your athletes is a huge, huge, huge thing. And what happens at the, I want to call it the top, what happens with our national team, with uh, our elite level athletes in, in all styles, um, it just it can't happen without you guys doing your jobs and doing what you're, what you're doing and, and you know, what you're great at. And uh, I, I thank you personally. Um, as a developmental coach for four years and now up to moving me up last year to uh, the senior national team, which I love. I mean, you can't, you can't get excited about winning the World Olympic titles and uh, you better, you better find something else to do. But uh, I still have a, a very strong interest in what's going on with our grassroots and our elite level developmental kids. Um, I really feel like over the long term of our lives or our impact on what, what we can do and what the sport we, we love, um, it's really where the rubber needs to go. We don't have any high level, we don't have Jordan Burroughs, we don't have Kyle Snyder, we don't have the next group without what you guys do. Like I said, I think it's I think it's the most important slice of USA wrestling. So uh, I'm excited to be here. Hopefully, I can do you guys justice. So Mike's got me scheduled for uh, Matt wrestling, and I uh, only got an hour, so that barely scratches the surface of Matt wrestling, in my opinion. But uh, I'm also here for you guys. I want you guys to go out and look at you know, like the programs need and what you're interested in learning about. Light on any of that, please uh, make sure you call around me or ask questions or uh, whatever you need. Um, so, Matt Wrestling, uh, with the rules, the new the, the last couple of years, six minute matches, human score, um, they brought back Parterre. Uh, I don't want to go into that too much, but why it went away. It was kind of counter to my personal philosophy, but a, a lot of it was because of the two-minute period, right? The two-minute periods, it's really tough to take down an elite level guy, so all your energy and efforts put into that takedown, that one score in the two-minute period. And because there's not much time to come back, if you make a mistake, people became very cautious, right? If, I, if we're wrestling and, and there's, you know, maybe it takes 30, 40 seconds for us to create a setup, I really only have one or two really good opportunities in that period. If I make a mistake, he goes behind me, you know, I'm really behind the eight ball. So all the effort energy, I didn't really need to say. But uh, I will need somebody here in a second. Um, let's put in the takedowns. Now, my personal philosophy was if we can take somebody down and turn them once, just, just once in a two minute period, it's going to be really hard to come back. If I'm ahead 3-0, it's going to be really hard to come back. But now, six minute matches, there's a big part of the game. And um, we haven't completed statistics yet for this year's World Championships. Uh, I've been watching, I would say, just a, a, a guesstimate. I would say it's, it's pretty consistent with last year. Uh, I would say defense has gotten better in Parterre. But last year, every world champion had multiple turns in every single match in 2014. And uh, the five Russians who won last year, they all had multiple turns in every match. Um, but that's, pretty, that's pretty significant. I mean, you're, you're basically doubling your points production with one position. I can take. We're wrestling in another uh, If I'm wrestling my opponent and I score two points, and then I can turn in to do more, that's 100% points production, right? It's 100% more than I'm scoring just with takedowns. So, uh, Parterre really important, um, but also really exciting and fun. There's there's a lot. I mean, technique, we all say it, uh, it's, it's infinite, the combinations that there can be. 
but um, man, at Hard Terror, it's just so much fun. It's just so much creativity that can that can be there. It's really limited only to uh, to your own your own thought process, I guess. So, uh, anyways, get off my soapbox there. Um, Start here. This is this is this is a pretty good position. 
okay? It's kind of slowing down. He can still move a little bit, but it slows him down a lot. And then it allows me to work. It allows me to work. So, um, and, and actually, when we did a lot of these drills, uh, when I was training, uh, from this guy's perspective, just right here, they move. Hard work. This is really hard work. That's what this guy needs to do. And uh, so, from, from the defensive or offensive bottom position, this that's a really good drill. It teaches a kid how to learn how to move with a lot of weight pressure on you, but keeping your hips and shoulders square. I can't really roly pull you like a fish out of water. You know, like this guy. This is what I want to be. Low and wide, like a sports car. Corner, right? I can drop back if he's going lazy. I can jump forward, circle if they're going gut, but it makes it a lot harder when a guy's on top of us. If we learn how to move that way. Plus, you're not going to move a whole bunch. So you're going to understand the idea of short, consistent movements, two, three inch suits. So good for him. So for me, uh, I'm just going to start with gut because it seems to be the most common. Get through that really, you know, at a very superficial level, but basics. Um, traditional gut, uh, just right here. Again, I like to trap, and I always start under. Um, they're they're being a little more internationally. They're being a little more uh, specific about fighting hands and fingers so that they're on us a little harder than they used to be. Uh, in Greco, I don't know if everybody knows the rules in Greco, in parterre you can't, you can't even grab the guy's arm below the elbow. So bottom guy, um, just like get a tightness in the Greco. So, so if I'm defending, I can't grab here. This is I'm going to get my hand slapped the first time, second time, they're probably going to go caution of one on me in Greco. I didn't see it called a ton in Las Vegas in the Worlds, but uh, I was also involved with preparing our freestyle guys, so I didn't pay that close attention. But it's right here, so it's elbows, which, which is okay. It makes it harder. It's probably better for the sport because you're probably going to see more parterre scoring, which is, which is going to help Greco. Um, freestyle you can, but they're still not letting us clam up. So when I'm on top, he's really, you know, locking down here. They're going to say, you know, open and slap the mat. Um, and, and there's, you know, varying degrees. There's many different degrees of this as there are officials, in my opinion. Did you say? Uh, so, um, you know, our basic. Our basic deep arm, so uh, is what I'm looking for as a top man with leverage. So if I want to gut right, I gotta have two things. I have to have deep arm left, and I have to have his hips off the mat. Okay, so I'm just working here. I'm gonna again. I'm pinning his hips down. I'm gonna go deep arm left, and then I'm gonna start working here. Um, basics. Basic elements of gut wrench and lace to me, honestly, are the same, they're the same things. Plant my shoulder, drive my legs, squeeze my elbows. And uh, I'll get through those on both positions. But, so, I get my tight waist, or I get my deep arm blocked here. I plant my shoulder, okay, on, on a traditional, conventional gut. I want my shoulder on his spine. And I want, so when my leg drive happens, I'm transferring a lot of power. As much strength and power as I have, not just my body weight on him, but all the power of my legs into his torso. Critical, something that is often overlooked, is the elevation. Everybody usually understands I can keep my shoulder on top. But Having my shoulder behind my lock is going to 
multiply the pressure that I can transfer into this guy by many, many times. So what I mean is this. If my log's right here, and I get my shoulder on top, right now my shoulder's in front of my log. And, and this is the thing that's deceptive. It's going to feel tight. It's going to feel tight to me, and it's going to feel tight to him. I get pressure, drive, and I'm putting a lot of weight pressure in this, and it's tight, right? But when I drop my shoulder behind it and lock and drive, it's way different, and I'm getting virtually no more effort. It's just simple physics. I'm, I'm really crimping his guts, his inside, his ribs between this lock and my shoulder. And it's very little arm power. It's all leg power. Right? Using our big powerful muscles instead of our little muscles. All I'm really trying to do is lock this. All I'm trying to do is, is not let his torso slide. His hips slide. Okay? That's why I'm going back to our trapping, trapping his hips here. Okay. If he's really good, what he's got to do is slide off this arm. Because this elbow, this deep elbow, that's the wrench, right? Like a box wrench. But all. If this thing slides, I lose, I lose my torque. Okay, so he's gonna he's gonna slide into me this way. Right? So my outside arm is really important for creating that lock, whether it's on his rib or low gut his hip bone, but my inside arm is equally important. That's why I squeeze here. Everybody knows this kind of squeeze. This is the squeeze that makes a gut wrench work. A lot of times I can even be loose and sloppy here. And when, when we get a little better, we have a really good solid feel sometimes. Um, that was honestly one of my favorite setups, to just kind of play impossible on that. Chad, you see here, I kind of got a loose and loose grip. He doesn't really know, and I kind of fake one way, and I get him to slide here, and he slid right into my deep arm, and then I explode the other way. So, anyways, deep arm, deep arm left, still trapping the same shoulder behind my lock, inside elbow, it's just, it's just trapping it here, just clamping it. It doesn't even have to be that hard, just enough to not let him slide. Now I'll drive, and drive forward. This is, this is a critical element to, to emphasize with all of our kids. You have to try to get them right, right? Wrong, go this way. This is what's going to turn it. If I go this way, this guy's, look at this guy, he's really big and strong. He's, he's going to be able to put up with a lot of, you know, he's just going to horse it out. And he can put up with a lot of torque. I want to move him forward, and as I do this creeping action, right, shoulder, lock, it's going to do this to his hips. His hips are going to come up like that. If I can get his hips up that much, I should be able to turn him. When his hips come up in the air, they come up just a little bit. This scene is going on. Right there. Now, as I load it into my hips, I kind of go to the right, but still, I want to follow the chain of his body. Up the chain is kind of how I was always taught, and I like that terminology. I still want to go forward. This is why. When I start to roll, the good guys, he's going to hook. He's still not giving up. He's going to hook legs. He's going to float hips. And the more I go to the side, the more I open that door. So, I'm going to drive forward, pitch it up, and I still want to go forward this way. And run my feet all the way through. Running my feet when I'm upside down. Running our feet all the way, driving all the way through the position, it cleans those things up. It makes our turn more powerful, more effective. And it, it neutralizes his defense and takes away his scrambling ability. The more I go to one side or the other, the more I open the door 
for whatever you may have. And so, um, probably the three, the three biggest things you see after the turn are, or once, once I have the turn, is a guy hooking a knee with his either hand or foot. So I go to the side and he reaches with left hand. Yeah, with my knee up. Outside. Right there. Okay, and then he's trying to float his hips. Float his hips over the top. You see this? Oh, it's over the top. Right there we go, all these no score. And then the last one, a lot of times you see guys, they know you got them. And they fight it as hard as they can, as long as they can. But after the turn, hook elbows. And then you like short sets. So I come through here, and he goes to this elbow. Okay. You know, yeah, it's fine. Right there, and sit out. And he turns back in. Now it's a scramble situation. It's a dog fight. I made it harder on myself than it needed to be. And that's because I don't have enough pressure going up the bottom. So, ideally, track tip. Keep going here. Give yourself shoulder. Shoulder placement is paramount. I can do everything right and I can drive and I can let my shoulder slip and it still feels tight. And I still think I got it. And maybe I do, but only on somebody that. If you get in there, he's fine. When you say you want your, uh, your shoulders behind your lock, you're saying you want to go forward? Yes. Yeah, so just come on your knees. So if my lock's here, I want my shoulder lower. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So then when I drive, it's crunchy. It's crunchy. It might give him otherwise. And that's part of that's part of our problems. That's part of our mistakes. Is uh I, I I tried to think when I was competing, when I was training, when I was coaching, I tell my guys, you have to have a, kind of a certain level of proficiency before this really is accurate. But once you have a, a good athlete who's pretty much got all the fundamental positions mastered, he's no longer, or she, is no longer wrestling their opponent, they're wrestling themselves. And what that means is, I don't know how good or bad this guy is, and he might have flaws in his game, chinks in his armor, which allow me to get away with less than perfection. Okay, so I might win practice and, and be losing the world championships, meaning I'm not being held accountable by my partners. So I'm not wrestling him; I'm wrestling me. I'm wrestling the the best that I can be today, or the best that I was previous to stepping on the mat this morning. I want to be better than that. Whatever that was yesterday, I want to be better than that this week. Okay? And, and that's how I continue to keep myself sharp and make sure that our athletes are getting incrementally better every day. Okay? Burroughs, don't just win the practice. Especially when you're in a room where you have a standout athlete who's used to training with, you know, he's got consistent training partners. It's a rare, it's a rare occurrence where you have two guys that just go like this all the time and keep giving that to each other. Pretty soon it goes like this. And it might be very close. And it might be a good situation for the most part. But there's a pecking order that gets established. And if somebody's used to something happening, that tends to happen. When I was in a college room and I was training freestyle, I had I had some good part-time background when I was younger. So I would get on top of the college guys and I'd squeeze them, and they'd fight really hard the first few times, and then they would get used to me turning them, and then the next time I'd get on and squeeze, I'd get a little squeeze and they'd just flop over. And so I lived like a monster in practice, right? I'd, I'd just turn at everybody, and then I get to international levels, and guys are fighting me hard, and I'm not getting as many turns. And that's because I was allowing myself to be sloppy. So, 
this type of stuff, this forward drive, the squeezing with my elbows, the planting of my shoulder and not letting that shoulder slip, those critical elements, I have got to do those whether I turn the guy or don't turn the guy. Whether he rolls over like a limp noodle or he fights me with everything he has. And so that's what I'm talking about. Wrestling, all in perfection. Like you're talking about, like, like when I train for soccer. Yeah. Big thing with Cartier and then I, I struggle with trying to keep them, everybody healthy. Uh -huh. like putting them in a position. Are there drills that you're doing to, to not get sloppy, but also make sure that you know, we're not banging each other up or anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes a little bit of time for him to toughen his ribs up, too, right? Yeah. Like I'm really soft. That's the first thing. When I got done competing, it's the first thing I lost. It's this part there. It's just, you know, you used to get squeezed, squeezing on it. So just simple drills like, uh, honestly, the best bang for your buck, you got rid of is three in a row, my opinion. One alternating side. So I start right, I go left, and then I come back right. And the reason I say alternating is because it forces me to adjust. I make adjustments where I get loose and sloppy. And if I'm, if I'm not doing things 100% accurately and correctly, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find that out, right? Especially if you're there watching as my coach, right? You say, hey, Zach, run your feet all the way through. You see this? This, this, is a, this is a combo, right? I get the guy turned on and I do this. Roll up on my knees. Oh, nice gut wrench. Wrong. Terrible. Okay. What you're doing is you're training a weakness into yourself because you think you're doing it pretty good and then somebody who's really good is going to put you in trouble. So, a simple drill is just like this. Get my lock here, I'm going to set. I'm going to go this way, run my feet all the way through on top. The reason I run my feet through is twofold. One is it takes away his defense, but also it sets me for the follow up turn, which is the best time to turn somebody is right after you've already turned them. He's thinking, oh crap and you're thinking two more points. So I recover, shoulder placement back the other way. It forces me to change. And if I just, if I'm sloppy and I just fall off this side, same thing happens. So with good observation, I'm forced to adjust my head. I keep pressure on him. I don't lift up. I just slide right here and I go back forward. And it will expose a lot of our weakness. So if we can impress those, those keys on our athletes so they know, then we're coaching independence, right? You don't have to have eyes on all 30 people in the room. When you're on the other side, Johnny and George know what they're doing. Okay, that felt sloppy. And so he's, he's getting better too. Because he's got to give me proper resistance. If he's a wet noodle, it doesn't work for either one of us. So he's developing the field of keeping a wide base, giving some pressure, and maybe, maybe the drill is for me. But I need him to give me a, a realistic feel, is what I say a lot, but not a whole lot of resistance, maybe 20%. So I'm developing, I understand the feel I'm going to get from a quality opponent, yet I'm, I'm, I'm being successful. And I'm learning how to execute and move properly. And then as I perfect that, we can increase resistance and extend defense and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I had a question about your lock and transition from one gun to the other. I mean, you, you were doing like this butterfly lock. Yeah. When you go to the other side, were you, lock, were you locking on your wrist? Yeah, I don't switch my lock. Yeah. Um, conventional wisdom is that the deep arm is on top. So if I'm going right, my left arm comes through and it locks here. And so if I'm going left, right arm's deep, and that's on top. However, um, I don't personally do that, and I'm not going to advocate one or the other. Uh, I think that if you're able to keep your shoulder tight and your elbows locked, you're going to turn. If you're not, 
you're not switching your lock and you're not turning them, then maybe you should switch your lock. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, that wasn't something I thought of. It just happened. And as I got better, and I just realized I wasn't switching my lock. Well, you know, that works. That's, that's old Gable philosophy. You can do it your way as long as it's successful. And once it's not successful, then you do it his way. Seems to work for the most part. <laughs> okay, so that's where we are. Seven thirty-seven. I'm not even gonna get through gut wrenches. So basic gut. Um, trapping his hips. Trapping his hips. Uh, and getting into our gut wrench, probably all of us know gut wrenches well enough. Um, getting your deep arm or getting your lock, your sweet spot. And, and this is regardless of uh, what your preference is. I'm a mid-range gut guy. I like my lock on bones. I'm, I'm right on the short ribs, right underneath the sternum. I actually lock a little bit higher than that because I'm anticipating this guy's, I'll go high gut and it doesn't feel too threatening, but he starts crawling forward. Even before, right there, he's going to crawl right into my sweet spot and I'm going to steal his momentum. I explode right into it. That time I had my head on the same side, right? That's maybe the next level kind of rest. But still, the key elements, my shoulders planted, my elbows were tight, I drove forward. Um, so regardless if I'm way low gut, or mid gut, or high gut, high gut's a little bit different. And uh, there's probably better high gut teachers out there than myself. Um, when I was training, Kendall was here for a little bit, I tried to learn it. I like technique, so even if I don't do stuff, I like to learn it and know it or understand it. And I would say it's a little bit different, a little bit different uh, directional pressures in a high gut where your tripod are way up, my hips are way high off the ground, and you know, leave my head or my shoulders planted, and I'm doing stuff like this to get the guy. But the, the basic fundamental is when your setup is still there, which a lot of times I'm creating movement to, to draw a reaction from him. When he reacts wrong, I'm going to capitalize on take advantage of So whether I'm here or even way down here, way down here, uh, my opinion. Uh, actually, not my opinion. Statistical fact: gut wrench in a soft spot is the lowest percentage turn. They're just not bones there to create pain. He can put a, up with a lot right here because there's a lot of soft, there's a lot of give, there's a lot of play. So the more that I can lock bone on bone, it's just basic wrench, box wrench philosophy, right? If I'm on a soft spot, I'm gonna strip the bolt go and it's not turning. But if I get down here on the bones, so low gut, I want to get way down on his, on his pelvis on the top end of his hips, and I'm going to keep his, his hips pinned forward with my chest, right here. And now this elbow, my right arm's deep, left elbow's locking, right here on this. This is another one that takes some conditioning. Because when you start this one, and when the top guy starts really getting the idea of this one, you're, you're going you're gonna to tear a lot of skin right here. It's tender. It hurts. Yep, it hurts. <coughs> good, good for the top guy. Same with, same with just a conventional lock. So along with my, my setup, my personal favorites, the one I already explained is where I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to floss him a little bit. I like him fake here and get him to react. Yeah, he does it. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. He just rolled right into his shoulder. And this, this hips up. I'm doing this too. Basically, I'm trying to get his hips over. But squeeze. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. No oxygen to the ribs, no blood in there. Relax. And boom! It's 
इसको बोल गया स्पिंच और से सिबा सर दिस का कोच लाल में रियली स्ट्रांग लाइक दिस एंड देन यू गेट अ लिटिल रिप्रीव ओह एंड सोन जी गिव देयर स्कीम्स फॉर द पेन इन दोस एंड देन ओह यू रॉक इट आई मीन इट्स अ हाफ अ सेकंड अ सेकंड इट्स नॉट वेरी लॉन्ग इट्स जस्ट अ लिटिल So conventional, you know, this is this is it. This is it. You see a lot of Greco stuff. The more you play with Greco, uh, really good stuff here. Knees in his hip, to his armpit, and then front hip lock. Right here, I'm doing this guys. Grab my leg. He can have that leg. I'll feed it to you. Get his hips up off the mat. Uh, another really good one. Had a hard time. Guy's really crawling forward. I'm pinning him down, but he's just heavy and strong, and he's good at fighting hands. Can't get my gut. Uh oh. He goes flat. Going forward, I think it's my seal is momentum. How, how many? Uh, what percentage of the turns comes off of what transition from the takedown as opposed to like these sorts? Great question. I don't know percentage-wise, statistical numbers, but I will tell you this: that when you watch the best guys in the world, they score in clusters, explosive clusters, right? Satya was really good at this. Zero zero. Five minutes into the match, six minute match, zero zero. Tech fall, five forty-five. Like geez, how does a guy do that? Because he doesn't do this. He does not let people off the hook. This that to me is a philosophy. Do not let them off the hook. Do not let them off the hook. Not let them off the hook in any position, anywhere. That's why, to me, it's a philosophy. So this is this is it. I crouch, I drive, start working. No, oh, no, gone. I just came out. I let him off the hook. I let him come up. I'm driving down right here. Look where I'm at. Transition. Whatever I do, we're doing gut wrenches right now. So. Transition deep waist. I already got momentum going. He bellies out. I stay up, put on the gas. Plant my shoulders, squeeze my elbows, drag my feet. You know, it's 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 simple concept. It's, it is difficult to do, but we have to be aware of the concept. We teach our young guys. Hey, look what's happening. You were in this perfect position. You had it, and you pulled your arm. Oh, I'm a lace guy. 
So. I'm a lace guy. Bro, you're a gut wrench guy. You know why? Because he was vulnerable for the gut wrench. It was staring me in the face. Learn the gut wrench. Okay? And, and then lacing, too. So. Um, but it, the lace is there, too. The lace is there. Right here. So instead of going, as we're coming down, transitions. This is really fun. I, I, sometimes I teach a session on transitions, and it's, it's really fun. So here. Instead of going from here to here, as we go down, I go from here to here. Right through his hips. To me, wrestling is 90% of what we're doing is all about our opponent's hips. So, knees pinned, he jumps down flat. Now I have a whole myriad of, you know, Kevin Jackson, when he was our national coach, he used to say, get in athletic. I have his knees pinned right here. I just hop. Simple, easy. His knees are trapped, I keep him trapped. <coughs> So he can get across, it doesn't matter. Elevate him, walk him up into it. Right here, your belly's down. Scoop. All I really need to do is, I got his knees together. He's in big trouble. I can gut wrench his knees. That's really what you're doing. But on a, on a conventional lace, I have to get my wrist in there. That, that's all I need. I don't need to thread and scoop it all the way. To turn him, if my hand goes in there, my hand, my wrist bends. I need to give up uh, just enough so it won't bend. I get that through there. Then it's like a crowbar. I scoop with my back knee and I drive forward. Same thing here. If I go to the side, it's going to get loose and sloppy. And if this guy's any good, He's going to circle to his left. Most guys, they're going to hit down, you know, beginner level knowledge, human instinct, right? Fight pressure, right? So he goes hit down. Thank you. I'm going to break your knees and, and or ankles off because I'm not going to let you out of this. I'm going to win this. I'm going to tech you. I can be down 9-0 and I'm going to win this match. So the, the good guy, he understands. He's going to circle left. It's going to get looser and looser if I roll sideways. He just went right down. So, really critical, just like your gut wrench, I go up the chain. So, I finish my high seat, I punch this deep, and I scoop, and I scoop, and I go right towards coach. What's your name? Nick. Nick. I go right at Nick. Forward up his spine. And if this arm gets deeper as I go, I can get it all the way through, but I don't need it to get the turn. And I want to get my points. So. Knees together. Right here. In this case, I would probably do something way different like this. Right there. I just scooped it up. Kind of like half Nelson, but I took it right to his butt. That was a big trouble. Scoop with my back knee. I can turn it here. If he pushes his butt back into me and his knees go wide, I'm going to lock right there. And I'm still going this way. So when I turn, when I turn right, gut wrench lace, cross lift, uh, bow and arrow. Whatever you're doing, which is really where I want to get to, I'm going to go one or two o'clock. If I'm going left, it's 10 or 11 o'clock. So I'm always going up, over the shoulder, <coughs> over the shoulder, until you feel the tipping and breaking point. And then I still go forward. But sometimes you try to rush things. And the quickest way to the exposure is go this way, right? <coughs> Not really. Not on a good guy. This guy knows what he's doing. And so even when you have guys in your room that aren't giving... To, to learn something, to, to perfect...
contract the movement. I want this guy to be not limp, but I don't want much resistance. I want to create the ideal of perfection in my athlete so he knows he's creating good muscle memory there. So he knows where to get back to. Then, as he perfects the movement, we, we can increase resistance on that stuff. So, yeah, transition, man. Awesome. Fun position. Exciting when you see your athletes start to develop an awareness of transition. The guy's in trouble. You're taking him down. His hips are in the air. Keep him in trouble. Keep him in trouble. You don't not let him off the hook. Biggest place that we let people off the hook in wrestling is on their knees in front of us. He shoots and I stop him right here. This is it. Best guys in the world again, back to Satya or, or whoever. They swore on this guy 93, 4% of the time. He took a shot and I stopped him right behind him. Or front headlock. This is, this is a secondary to this position. As we front headlock, oh, I got it, I stopped it. I won. No, you didn't. Zero, zero still. Okay, and then he fights, he starts coming up. Let him. Just let him off the hook, man. Punish the dude. Gable philosophy. When I shoot, I score. When he shoots, I score. Punish him. Make him afraid. How dare you even shoot on me? And uh, just that philosophy, to me, that was... Um, this is honestly something ingrained in me when I was very young. I had really good coaches around me, good people. They maybe weren't the greatest coaches, but they were good thinkers. My dad, uh, a guy named Floyd Pond from was actually from Michigan, he lived in Montana, he was in Hawaii. Mark Sprague is in Portland, Oregon. Never Russell advanced his life, maybe one of the best technicians, developmental technicians that I know of. Really good, really good. Uh, but that philosophy, you're wrestling, wrestle. Don't get so bent and focused on the winning that you forget the wrestling. If, if, we, if we hunger for the wrestling, and hunger to win, win the wrestling, I'll wrestle the guy. Don't just win, don't just get my hand raised. Wrestle the guy. I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn a massive amount of information. And the more I collect information, the more our bodies, we, we won't, I, we were, uh, Brahman and, and uh, another coach, Travel and I, Travel, Delagam's in town, and he and I had about a four and a half hour conversation last night, starting about 4 p.m. Went to the doctor, came out of the doctor's office, had dinner, walking up the stairs, ran into Brahman, talking about this, and how to implement this philosophy. Don't get so hung up on the winning and losing, but the wrestling. So, we, we, human nature is to win. Human nature is to elevate ourselves. Human nature is to outrun the guy next to us who's trying to run down that deer. Or trying to run down that mate to breed with. Right? It's, it's instinct. We don't have to worry about that. But if we only are focused on outcome, we lose the process. And the process what we were talking about last night. The process should be deemed a success, not the gold medal. So the more times I shoot this high crotch and I'm unsuccessful because he just lost me because my hips were out. And he sprawled, okay, he sprawled on me, I didn't go, I didn't score. I'm gonna feel something. And I'm gonna make an adjustment and my body knows where to go. Okay, and I know what drilling a perfect high crotch feels like. So why, why didn't I get there? Okay, it forces me to reflect and evaluate and make myself better. That's process oriented. It's all about just scoring points. Well, I take that back. I think the points is okay. Getting the hand raised. That's that's more. Not that goals are bad. I think it takes. I think it takes a good portion of both. But I think it's, it's, I am a more process oriented person than, than just missing goals. Anyways, uh, we're going to go over time, guys. Who's next after me? Matt. Matt? Okay. Yeah.
<laughs> I talk about it. <laughs> okay, so uh, same, same idea here. If you guys have questions, um, please find them away. But I, I want to get through uh, two, two things real quick. So same idea uh, for lace. Okay, plant my shoulders, squeeze my elbows, drive my legs. So whether I'm transitioning from here, okay, you saw what I did with my legs there, kind of, was kind of sneaky about it. I didn't tell you, he didn't really, he wasn't threatened by it, because I'm up here looking for a gut, and he's worried about that gut wrench, and I pinned his both knees down. Okay, now I'm going to slide down his body, and I'm going to beat his shoulder, his hips with my shoulder. Okay, at the same time, my arms are sliding down his body, they're staying close. Okay? So I'm scooping out with my knees and back here. Okay? So when I do this properly, I, I honestly, when you get to like a really good level of it, you'll let the guy's hips come up because it helps you. It actually makes it easier. Okay? But if I don't, that's good too. I plant hips and I scoop right there. When I scoop, I'm above the knees. See that? Both hands are above the knees. I have to learn in this position as much as anyone. I have to learn how to use my elbows like hands. So I'm using, I'm using all of this surface area, not just this, with my elbows out. I scoop here. So my elbows close tight to my body, right there. Now it's all, it, it literally, if I get somebody to this point, it should be match over. The, the key thing here is, again, is pinning the guy's hips. So I forward pressure, forward pressure. It's from my legs. It's not just leaning on the guy with my butt way up high. It's right here. Now I just, see this? I kneel over and thread. Scoop, scoop. Angle. I'm going to go forward. This top arm is going to wrap his knees. I'm going to punch to the ceiling and wrap. You can see this? I don't, I don't have it scooped all the way, but I will. Wrap. Keep doing it. <coughs> so, so, this is where it's really sweet. The only thing that, not the only thing, but one, one critical thing to be aware of as far as sloppiness and, and trying to turn him too soon, go this way too soon, is if I take pressure off his hips and I don't keep his hips pinned, he rotates like this. And he's got a limp leg on me. Okay? And this is this is good defense on his part. Because he's pretty much, he's in big trouble. But if I go to the side and he rolls his hips, this bottom, he's gonna pull his bottom leg, pull to your chest right there. So he's gonna do, you kind of call it leg whip or limp leg. He's gonna kick back with the top leg. That. I pull the bottom line to his chest, I kick it back out, and I lost the position. And that's because I didn't keep his hips in. I'm going too much to the side, and I hit square, pin with that, and going right there. Right over his right shoulder. Come here. You can't do it. When I start falling off, now I can do it. I just lost it. Come back up. You know, this, re, re it, and you know. But it's it's important to be aware of that because it's when guys start to get really good at laces, that's probably one of the most consistent flaws that I see. We rush the position and I lose something very good that I had because I'm in a rush. Same same thing going the other way. Scoop his back knee, outside knee under the laces. Here, it can get loose and sloppy. He can circle to the right and try to hook leg on me. 
Here it's going to be much harder. You can serve it right. I'm going to be turning before that. If I don't have that back knee and I start to turn, it's going to unravel on me. But a really, really good guy. Again, the leanies, that's, 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 it's, our sport's very deceptive. It's very deceptive. That's why we have got, I'm real nitpicky about technique when I teach, when I, when I coach. When I coach. And there's a lot more to all these positions, a lot more refinements, but the fundamentals are all there. Oh. Anything else? Lace-wise? There's a lot, I mean, you can spend a whole week on the ankle laces. There's so many variations and they're all really fun, and painful, and ferocious, and I like it. Uh, one, other, one other idea I want to throw at you guys, though, that I think is really important and really valuable, that I don't think, I don't think as Americans we wrestle very much. Um, uh, it, it, the position lends itself more to Turks, arm Turks, leg Turks. Uh, you can study uh, Valentin Jordanov if you haven't studied him. Um, I would encourage you to. In the modern wrestling era, he's probably the most notable expert in this in this position. Um, I know he had a huge influence on Dave Schultz, and of course, Dave's had a huge influence on the rest of us. Um, but this position right here is still about thinning the guy's hips, and uh, it's really good for folk style. Um, interestingly enough, I was not a leg rider in college at all. I was a tight waist chop guy, pretty basic, pretty straightforward. I was a freestyle grappler kid all my life. So I didn't wrestle folk style until I was about eighth grade, and my best my best turn in folk style was an ankle race right here. Pick him up, turn him, boom, right there, settle in. Okay, that's that's how bad it was. So, uh, but after I started learning some stuff, after I was out of college, um, this position I, I actually got kind of good, or at least proficient. But it's just right here. I'm still pinning the guy's hips. I'm trapping here. And I'm blocking his, his hip with my knee. And I'm keeping a lot of weight, my upper body. This is critical element here. I'm keeping a lot of weight pressure forward on him. And this elbow's in his armpit. And sometimes I'll post right here. So he can't turn back into me. Because if he can turn and get into a ball, this, this, then I have to change. You know, I mean, there's things I can do, right? But it makes it much harder. I want to keep it flat and extended. So I can do this from, you know, I gut wrench, I drop back a lace, and the guy goes, you know, maybe he goes butt back knees while I can sit on your haunches, way back. Yeah, like this. This, this works for this. This is a really good breakdown. Folks out of all free stuff. I'm just going to take his ankle, right here, stretch him out. I'll run him down like this, and I end up right here. I'm going to hang on to it, elbows in the ribs, weight press forward, knee in his hip. And I'm just going to scoop that right here. Now I can, now I can bust. Now what happens a lot for me is this guy gets really squirmy. And he starts moving and making lots of mistakes. And maybe I just, maybe I just keep it. And I just take this ankle and I run it right over his head. Or maybe, you know, whether I, I keep like this is good. I like to catch his heel and his toe right in my elbow because it looks really safe. It looks really domestic, but it's really mean. You can't grab his toe, right? It's illegal. But I have his toe. So he will be the best of that. His ankle is in serious trouble. And the more I spread this out, I am putting a lot of pressure on how I can elevate. And I can take it right over. And switch into the crotch so it right over. And then, as I get better, there's a lot of legs for crazy punk stuff. Scoop. That terrible plumes are gone off. Right there. Under the bottom leg? Yeah, I said the Under the near leg, over the far leg. With my inside leg. So 
But if you're out of touch, guys, you go gut next, right? Keep those knees to his elbow right here. Uh oh, big, big job. Give that. Really strong kill me. Just like this. I want both knees under. Only thing I gotta watch out for is doing this, right? So he hips in over me. That's why I gotta keep that pressure forward here. Arm trick. Shoulder and belly. Elevate. It's a really fun position. And then the right hand. That was good. Then kind of leg guy. Time out, but you got to be adequate, maybe. Oh, here. I just slide it up. Knee high, my heel right in scratch. As high on the leg as possible. Um, but really, um, think back through, I think back through, and anybody add to this, uh, as you recall, the evolution of Park Terror through the 90s when it was a big part of the game. It was a big part of it. Guys adapt pretty quickly. They adapt pretty quickly. So the World Champions this year, like I said, they haven't got the statistics back yet. There were still a lot of turns, but there were fewer. Why that? Were they getting worse? No. Guys are getting better in defense. So the conventional stuff, is, it becomes harder to do because this guy's better. So then you, you go to the next level of flat. You go to the next level stuff, which is what we're talking about today. In and hips, isolate one leg to get to my gut, isolate the leg. He doesn't even think that one down here. But that's where I'm going all, all, the whole time. Unless he just hands me a stupid lace, he makes a mistake and I catch him. But this kind of stuff, leg in, okay, he's, he's close to the way out. Half hard. Divers and college were teammates. They were older than me. They, they used to really frustrate me by getting legs here, water arms, deep waist. Almost on turns, but they worked just as well as this time. With that leg in, leg in trap arm, leg in conventional gut. I go leg in, and I'm fighting, I'm fighting. He's really posting up, and I'm really making this look for you. And he's posting up. I'm really selling this, and then I come to the middle. And there's, there's a lot of position, a lot. It's far more than I know, and I know a few things. But it's, it's just, um, it's really fun wrestling. It's really exciting wrestling. Because I know. Uh, we kind of have a philosophy of pain as a motivator. Yeah. So are you, I mean, we don't teach our kids to, we don't want to teach them, but, you know, pain is a motivator. It's yeah. Pain. When I was younger, I was much more into pain and hurting people. Into pain and hurting people? Yeah, like, I, if there was a movement, I could, like, Make you make you cry or hurt you, not injure you, not break something, but I don't know. If I broke your arm because you're defending my gut, you know that was your fault. You shouldn't move your arm. Uh, I'm not so much into that. Um, not because I'm hopefully not because I'm any less tough, but I certainly don't mind pain. Gut wrench is pain. It's, it's educated pain. It's smart. I have to do things properly. And maybe the reason I got away from that is 
pain alone will not work on really good guys, in my opinion. So, you know, we got to become better wrestlers. We've got to be, become better. And it's about efficiency, and it's about pressure, and position, and angles. And that is refinement. And, uh, you know, right now, we got some really good, tough guys on the world team. Really tough guys. They work really hard. They're not good enough wrestlers. I love Brent Metcalf. I love him. He's an awesome human being. He's a great family man. He's got two kids. Wife seems like an awesome family. Kids not good enough. If I'm ahead 4-0, you can punch me in the face all day long, and I'm going to laugh. I'm going to take my black eyes and my gold medal, and I'm going to laugh all the way out of the building. You got to out Russell the guy. Now, if you can do that, create a little pain, it's a really strong selling point. It's kind of my philosophy. This position is, it's really uncomfortable for guys. Because you got to pin down, he, he really doesn't know whether, you know, the crap will go blind. You, you don't know which way to move. And that's where we want him. That's where I want him. I want some, I want an option to score everywhere he goes. So if he's really strong and tough and I can't move, I'm just going to keep ratcheting up the pressure until he cracks somewhere. Or maybe that's just walking right up with his head. What's that? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that floating room is really hard to break, right? It's not attached to it. And it's flexible. Yeah, it moves a lot. I think it's probably, sure. Here's what I would say, is when you know Iranian culture, and you know how important the sport of wrestling is in Iran, it's, it's their national sport, wrestling and soccer, it would be like akin to the NFL in America, right? If you think that there is one offensive lineman, defensive tackle, running back, quarterback, that wouldn't break somebody's rib to make it to the NFL. All right, so, so would they break your ribs? Yeah, they'll break them. <laughs> but shame on you for letting them. Shame on me for giving that guy a dog on lock when you know he's good. You know, I, I know when I wrestle Iranians, when we wrestle Iranians, they have watched us. They have studied you. They have mimicked your wrestling in practice hundreds of times, if not thousands. You've got to be ready to wrestle them. And because of the importance it is culturally, that guy wins a gold medal, he's set for life. That's a pretty strong motivator. here. But now we're getting into a different subject. I, I think it's good to understand that thing. Those factors, Russia, Iran, these other countries. I know we can overcome it, but we have to understand the game plan. We have to understand the fight that this athlete has in September versus the fight he has in January. It's important, he's a competitor. Not the same in September. So, anyways, hopefully that was good information for you guys. Um, honestly, I was just scratching the surface. There's so much wrestling there, and it's, it's really fun and intriguing stuff, and that's uh, as hard as this sport can be, we have to continually remind ourselves this is what we love. This is what I love. This is fun. This is fun. I'm going to sit around and watch Matt because I know he's going to show something I've never seen before. I know I'm going to learn something. And um, every time I walk into a gym, a room, I, I know that I'm sure every one of you guys, I don't have enough time to do this, I'm sure every one of you guys, there's at least one thing that you know and do that's better than me, and I want to know that. I want to add that to me. I want to I want to pass that on to some other guys that have a chance. You know, Kyle Snyder is, is he's a great, awesome young kid. But I, I, I hope, I pray that he's not an anomaly. And I don't believe he is. I believe that he's a hungry young man that is really mature. I mean, I've been saying this for about three and a half years now. Is he's a 27, 28-year-old pro trapped in a 17-year-old, 18-year-old, now 19-year-old body. But there's others like him. There's Bo Nickel. There's the Valencias. There's Mark Hall. There's 
Spencer Lee, there's Dayton Fix, there's Kato Levis, there's a myriad of really good kids out there, and I want to infect them with the love and passion that I was given from a lot of guys. Mark Sprague, I mentioned, I mentioned Mark. That's Matt's club, his, his club coach. So Matt benefited from him. You know, the guy's legacy is phenomenal. If you're ever around him, he's, he's uh, so awesome. Sprague had a huge impact on my son. Yeah, he, he's, he's had a huge impact pretty much on everybody he's ever touched. At the, at the end of my session, uh, I'm going to uh, read a poem that Coach wrote. Yeah, so. awesome. <laughs> awesome. Anyways, uh, if I can do anything for you guys in your programs when you leave, I'd love to give you my email. Or you can find it on that. Um, it's just first initial, last name, B. Zadik, 1D, Z-A-D-I-C-K, at USAWrestling.org. Um, like I said, I'm... I'm I'm in the national, the senior level position right now, but I'm, I'm, I have a real passion for the developmental kids. And uh, if there's anything that we can do to help get your kids resources, get them out to training camps, get national team athletes out to your clubs, have one of us come out there, give you some outlines and practice plans and nutritional info. Uh, we can connect you with our USOC uh, support staff strength, conditioning, diet, nutrition, sports psych. Um, love to help you out.